What's going on, dudes and dudettes? Just kidding. I know there are no girls here. I've had some people ask me about what pistol light they should get, uh, recommendations, things to stay away from, and I just wanted to uh, shed some light on that topic since I have uh, several of them here with me today. So, first up, we'll go for uh, the smaller lights, the pros and cons. Uh, pros, they're smaller, they're going to be a little bit easier to conceal if you're carrying inside the waistband. Uh, they're just, the profile of them, the overall um, size is just smaller. So they'll be easier to carry. You'll have a smaller holster, less stuff inside your belt line. Uh, so if comfort is first and foremost to you, uh, well, first off, carrying a gun is never super comfortable, comfortable, uh, but I find it very comforting. So, uh, with these pistol lights, the TLR seven a is the one that I recommend as far as the compacts go. And then the TLR seven sub for subcompact guns. Uh, it's essentially the same thing, just slim down even more in the body. Uh, but these make about 500 lumens, around 7,000 candela. Uh, they're usable, but not super great. As you're seeing right now, uh, doesn't have a lot of throw. This tree line that you're looking at is about 150, 200 feet away. Uh, and it's, it's illuminating to an extent, but not really anything worth writing home about. Uh, these are only really good for when you're super up close uh, inside of, let's say, 20, 30, 40 feet. Uh, it does have enough power that it is disorienting to an extent, but they're, they're okay. Uh, they run on a single CR123 battery. Uh, the switches on these are excellent. I Actually, these are probably my favorite switches out of all of them is the, the ones off of this particular light right here. Stepping things up into a little bit more uh, potent of an area. Uh, you're going to go into your full size lights. Uh, these ones typically have a little bit higher output. Usually they, uh, they have better battery situation. They can draw more current and hence make more power. Uh, this one here costs about the same as the uh, TLR 7A. At the time we're recording, you can pick these up for around anywhere between 120 to 150 bucks. Uh, this one right here, around the same. Sometimes you can get them a little bit cheaper. They're not quite as common. This is the PID HC. This light here, makes uh, right around 800 lumens is what it's rated at and around 40 something like 40 45,000 candela i did a video featuring this light in particular um, already general consensus especially after having it after a while now i like everything about this light except for the switches the switches on this leave a lot to be desired the momentary on function uh if you don't press and hold properly you're going to have a really hard time keeping the light on and uh, the pressure required for it is a little bit heavy. I understand that you don't want white light NDs, you know, drawing, manipulating the firearm, whatever, uh, but this is a little bit extreme as far as the amount of pressure that's required in order to get that. And combine that with the way the switches are oriented, the fact that they're, uh, they're angled kind of weird, you're going to end up with a really compromised grip and it's just, it's just not a good time. So I have this one thrown on my training airsoft gun. This is a uh, gas blowback Glock 19X, and it's pretty sick. Um, this setup right here will fit in all of my duty and concealed carry holsters because it's a Glock. With uh, this light here, they fit in the majority of TLR1 holsters. So any of the, the Streamlight TLR1 based holsters out there, this will fit in just fine. This runs on a single 18350, so you get a lot of, a lot of current draw capability with that. And I think that's what makes this light so good as far as the output is concerned. It has a magnetic charging port on the bottom and you can also just unscrew the light head itself, remove that and remove the battery that way. So you don't have to actually remove the light from the weapon at all at any point in order to change the battery or charge it, which is quite stellar. If the switches were similar to the TLR7, it would be a lot better off. Again, at that tree line, you're seeing that it's got a lot of power. Uh, it blows the socks off of the majority of other lights out there uh, in this price range, specifically the TLR7A that we're comparing it to. It is just leaps and bounds better. Yes, it is a little bit more bulky. Yes, it is a little bit heavier, but significantly higher output. And uh, yeah, so coming up here, I do have a fixed aperture on my camera, obviously. So I'm fixed aperture and ISO. So what you see is what you get. Uh, if I hit that, it is, it's a lot. So very disorienting uh, for any kind of opponent, uh, whatever scenario you cook up in your head. 
Uh, these, they're just great lights. Um, the switches kind of leave a little bit to be desired though. Real quick guys, I just want to take a second to give a shout out to Nightfall Solutions. They sell plate carriers, body armor, bags, medical equipment, and much more to come. Hit them up, use Patriot 10 at checkout, and you will get 10% off your order. Back to the video guys. Next up, this is probably one of my personal favorites. This is the Goonbeam Short V1. I really like this light. It is a great light. Um, they fit in all TLR1 holsters, so that is excellent uh, without any weird modifications or anything. Uh, this light, unfortunately, due to the Streamlight design, you will have to remove the light in order to change the batteries, and the battery door on these is notoriously not as durable as something like uh, the Surefire ones, even though those aren't that durable either. This light here makes roughly 600 lumens and 42,000 candela is I believe what it's rated at. Uh, and it is a great light for the money. You can pick these up on sale for around 115 to $130 uh, directly from Goonbeam. I do have an affiliate link down below. If you click on that, it will give me a little bit of a kickback. But with that being said, I purchased the majority of these lights prior to me being affiliated with him in any way shape or form i was just any a normal customer just like anybody else and loved him so much i actually reached out to him and uh, we set something up so these lights here they're great they've got a lot of power as you can see in the video comparing it to uh, the other lights this one performs extremely well compared to the tlr7a and it also performs on par with the Holosun PID High Candela. The High Candela version of the PID has just a little bit cooler color temperature than the Goonbeam. I prefer a little bit warmer color temperature, but you know, potato, potato, it doesn't really matter that much. These lights are great. They fit in all common holsters. You can get, you know, this configuration right here with a Glock and a, a TLR1. You can buy holsters for them everywhere. Last up, we've got Surefire's entry into it. This is the Surefire X300 Turbo. This is an excellent light. Uh, has the pedigree and everything that goes along with Surefire as a company. Uh, they just, they're known for making repu reputable lights that are just very durable, very duty worthy. I know that's kind of an ambiguous term, but uh, duty grade lights. Uh, it is just slightly longer than something like the uh, TLR1. Um, they come in about a quarter inch longer. Usually these will share similar holsters to the TLR1 when it comes to duty holsters, but as far as concealed carry or any kind of custom molded Kydex holster, they're going to have a completely separate holster um, holster lineup than the TLR1 lights. So with that being said, if you already have an X300 based light, like the X300 or X300U, which is the ultra model, um, if I would recommend going with this light it is going to be more expensive. The other lights around $130 price range. This one is going to run you closer to 300. Sometimes you can find them on sale. Uh, for example, during Black Friday, I, I picked this one up from Palmetto State Armory of all companies with one of their discount codes. It came out to like 240 bucks after um, shipping, which is honestly quite great for as good of a light as this is. This one here, I believe has similar specs to the other full size lights uh, around 600 ish lumens and I believe this one has higher candela though this one's around 50 something 55 60 thousand candela in practice this one just has a slightly tighter hot spot and a little bit less spill the other ones as far as carry lights I find are very adequate uh, as far as their balance between hot spot and spill so you get your uh, usage of candela and lumens in a proper way the x300 does use a very tight hotspot and in some situations it can be a little bit uh, lackluster as far as spill is concerned but it is still very adequate as far as anything involving a pistol they did their homework when making this light all right so again we'll do constant on here it is a very bright light as with all the other lights out here besides the Holosun PID HC this runs on CR 123A uh, batteries um, the lithium ones, they're about a buck to two bucks a piece. So it isn't the best setup in my opinion uh, for just the everyday carry kind of thing. I prefer rechargeables because I can just top them off every once in a while and they're good to go. Uh, with these, um, depending on if you dry fire with your light or not, you're going to have to swap them out 
every uh, few months, every year, something like that. And then if you use it frequently while shooting outdoors, you can burn through a set in uh, a night or two. So the switches on the X300 did not change between the turbo and the ultra and the previous X300 really. They're very short, they're very stiff. In order to activate momentary on, you push in to the switch. And then in order to turn on constant on, you either sweep down or sweep up. So push in, down, or up. It works pretty okay. I do not like shooting with momentary on, on the X300s. I find that it's okay for like, you know, kind of scanning kind of stuff. But as soon as you start shooting, especially with a gun like this, for example, a 45, um, with that compromised grip, when you're pushing into that, it can be just a little bit much with uh, the recoil of the gun, it's cycling and all of that to stay with a good momentary on setup. It sometimes will flicker on you uh, because of inconsistent pressure. So I prefer to run constant on on the X300 platform. With the TLR1 based lights, with these switches, I find they're a little bit easier to activate and stay on while I'm shooting. So I run momentary on with these. Again, you know I'm already not a fan of the switches, so this is going to be a moment, or a constant on pretty much the entire time, unless you're just doing a very quick little scan. Unfortunately, with the way that they have these switches programmed, you're going to end up with a weird situation sometimes where you'll think you're doing a momentary on, and you'll accidentally, like I did right there, put it in a constant on mode. And then sometimes it'll be vice versa. You'll think, okay, I've got just enough to do a constant on, and it won't be enough. The timing is just a little bit weird on these switches, unfortunately. I think they could have done a little bit better job with the programming. Hopefully they fix that in the future, but as of right now, that's kind of my general consensus of it, is it's an okay light, not my first recommendation, definitely not my last. Uh, stay away from anything O-Light, guys. Uh, the TLR7A, you get your momentary on by pressing and holding. As you can hear, the switches are very tactile on this. And then constant on, all you have to do is just a quick tap, and I find that the TLR7A just has a more responsive light output versus the Holosun. The Holosun, if you press really, really quickly, it actually won't fire the light. It has some kind of negligent discharge protection feature built into it, so if you accidentally tap it, it won't turn it on. I prefer to have, if I just do a quick tap like that, it just throws it into constant on mode. Uh, but for these, you actually have to have it intentional, very, very intentional as far as, okay, I need to press and hold for just a second in order for it to turn on constant on and then I'm good. The constant on feature on this light here is pretty simple, pretty straightforward enough. So you press down on the left side for right-handed shooter, you're gonna press down on the left side and it'll be momentary on. If you want constant on, you sweep it up and then it's just constant on. Obviously, if you are lefty, you're gonna have to push up on the left side or on the right side of the light in order to do momentary and then sweep down for constant on. So at this point you may be asking, well, which one should I get? So all of these lights are good. You really can't go wrong with any of them. It really depends on the application. If you're carrying outside the waistband or you don't mind having a larger setup inside your waistband, uh, the X300 Turbo or the Goon Beam are probably my recommendations as far as that goes. I find that the Goon Beam just being a little bit shorter tends to be a little bit more comfortable, especially when sitting down for long periods of time. You don't end up with that light jabbing into your thigh if you're carrying appendix. Um, but me personally, you might be asking what I'm carrying, and this is what I'm carrying. I am carrying the Goon Beam Short V1 on a Gen 3 Glock 19 with a Ramjet and a Red Dot. This is a really great little setup. I like it a lot. I find that this is a, a good balance of price to performance and then size. I just like the form factor and it's bright. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and drop a comment down below. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. Really do appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one.